The young talent continues to impress at Auburn spring practice. Let's talk about it on this live edition of the Uptempo Podcast. You are now listening to the War Report Podcast Network. Good evening, Auburn family. It is Blake Lane and Dustin Smith, and we are here for another live edition of the Up Tempo Podcast. Fired up, Blake, talking some football, baby. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. I finally recovered from a, a basketball game. I finally got over the uh You're getting there. Yeah. It was it was rough, but I, I made it. I survived and uh, still love Auburn sports, even though sometimes it's it's hard to get through and you know it, it takes us on a roller coaster of emotions but you know we made it and uh right now watching this baseball team they're currently losing two to one had a horrendous first inning but uh found a way ike irish just hit a bomb so cut the lead to one they're down two to one in the top of the second but man uh, i'll be honest with you dustin i'm ready to talk some football brother like just hearing the excitement out of camp and then we're so close to a day and we know what a day is gonna bring with the baseball series being there and just uh, i think i think we're gonna have a lot of excitement in that stadium i think a lot of people are gonna show up hopefully the good weather uh comes to auburn alabama that weekend and we do not have to uh endure another hurricane like last year so uh, you know, hey, young team, talented team, a lot of excitement. Uh, I'm ready, man. Yeah, for sure. Let me get over here to the chat real quick, and I see some of y'all mentioning the big news coming out uh, from the softball today. I will touch on that at the end of the show. Uh, remind me, don't let me, don't let that slip. But I think we're all pretty excited there. Um, and the Auburn dad kind of touching on it. We're glad that you're here, Auburn dad. I got Chris is here as always. We appreciate you. Brown, our guy Brad is always here. The usuals, Blake in the building, always supporting us. My guy Brett, appreciate all you guys. So Brett, or during the Friday during the game, Blake, Auburn actually picked up a commitment from the offensive line. Now, like I said, middle of the basketball game, and then the way the basketball game ended, it kind of went unnoticed. But Ty Bluster, 6'3", 280. He's a composite three-star, unranked in some places. Others that you look at, he's ranked as a three-star. Ninth commitment of the 2025 class. Uh, we were like his first really big offer. Before then, it was kind of a group of five schools. But Auburn identified him, and then then you kind of you saw it start rolling. He got a Florida offer, a Penn State offer, and it really kind of came down to Auburn and Penn State. He visited, and then on the visit, he said, okay, I'm in love with this. This is the place that I want to be. So I feel like this is one of those kids that is will shoot up the rankings. And Auburn identified him early. I think it's kind of one of those where you were first on the eval. And I went ahead and did the member pod for our members today looking at his film. And I'll say this, athletic, like super athletic. There's a lot of there's a lot of plays where there's one Blake where he's 55 yards downfield and he makes he gets down there and makes a block, never gives up on a play. And then that block ends up giving his running back another eight to nine yards. So mm. an athletic kid that is a, has a high motor and a, a large ceiling. And uh, they think he's going to come in and play guard. They project him to come in and play the guard position. So I wanted to ask you, Blake, because if we break down this class, you've got three offensive linemen, three defensive linemen, two tight ends, and one DB. Pretty line of scrimmage heavy, huh? Uh, that's what it takes to win in the Southeastern Conference. And I, honestly, it's what it takes to win college football national championships, right? Yeah. Uh, who won the national championship this past year? The Michigan Wolverines. Where did they dominate, Dustin? That Penn State dominate. game in the second half was prime example. They dominated at the line of scrimmage, man. Like, that just simple and plain. Uh, they committed to Donovan Edwards and Blake Corum, you know, and – Everybody says that you got to spread the you got to spread the field out and go five wide and you know uh, just throw it around the yard and run RPO here and RPO there and all that good stuff. Uh, but you can always go old school and line up power eye like Michigan, and you can still run the tater if you dominate recruiting in the trenches, and that's where it starts. I don't I don't want to hear all the three star, two star, no star. We got an offensive lineman, folks. We got an offensive lineman, and that's what matters at the end of the day. Uh, if if Coach Thornton can keep 
busting his tail on the recruiting trail. You get a guy like this, 6'3", 280, going to play guard, come in. He, he could have been one of those guys that was just slept on, you know. He, and, and we found him. We found him first. And usually you, you get in there and you say, hey, Auburn wants you. He's like, well, they were the first P5 team to really show me love. Let me get over there. Wasn't this the kid that had the trouble, like he tried to make his own graphic or whatever? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love yeah, that. that. I mean, it couldn't, it couldn't even find somebody to get his graphic. Yeah, just a football yeah, player. Yeah, hey, player. love that. Just a football player. All right. Um, that just shows me he wants to work. You know, he's probably one of those kids. He's hard nosed, uh, and he wants to come in and work. And I think, uh, you know, you talk about his athleticism. That's something Auburn needs. So I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, well, he's a three star. We're never going to win with three stars and, and all of that stuff. Look, I know stars matter. I get it. But sometimes you find these kids and they do develop. Uh, I, we can go down the list and point out a number of guys from Auburn that come in as three stars and they ended up developing into, you know, top end draft picks. So. Uh, I'm excited, man. Anytime we get uh, anything on the line, I'm through the roof. And I think we're starting to get back to that that old way of Auburn where we got a solid offensive line, Dustin. And we don't have to worry about taking D tackles, all right, and moving them to the O line. We don't, we don't have to worry about doing that anymore. So I'm excited about this one. Yeah. Uh, a day hasn't even happened yet, and you've already got three commitments on the offensive line. And yep. it's been a while since we've been in that position. And I would tell, I would say that Jake Thornton last year, I think he proved he can take guys and get the best out of them. So I think that all offensive line took a big jump on the field last year under Jake Thornton. And as we'll get into here in a minute, we're hearing some good things about the way they're performing. So I just, we all knew that when Hugh Freeze took over, everybody said. The obvious of quarterback, but this was the one position we all identified and said, if Auburn wants to be competitive again, you have to fix the offensive line. And I think this yep. is a step in the right direction. And, look, as it as the season goes on, I think that this young man is going to get more power five offers. He's going to be one of those guys. Small school in North Carolina kind of slipped on the radar, right? Um, but I think as the senior season goes, you'll see those offers rise up. But – this is the benefit of having a good evaluation and getting in early on a kid. So, and everywhere you look, it puts us around sixth or seventh. So that's kind of where we're sitting at nationally right now. Blake, we got some more news today. Now, I do not like this. I got JD Rim is no longer with the team. And we know that last year we had, uh, he had some issues where he had to step away for a little bit. Yep. Super talented kid. You know, I was high on him from the beginning. And mm -hmm. it just seems like, Whatever it is behind the scenes, he can't get it right. And, you know, I'm not here to really discuss what went on and all that kind of stuff, but it just seems like uh could never get it together, and I'm hoping that he does. I would hate for him to waste his talent. But it's a position group where you've got young studs stepping up already, and if you're not doing the things that you need to do, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, Hugh Freeze is determined to change this culture. And if it means losing a good football player, Blake, whether it be a, a receiver that produced a lot for you last year or, you know, whether it be a, a talented guy like this, a DB, who I think can be an NFL corner, um, it's got to happen, man. What are your thoughts? Uh, look, we can sound like a broken record, but ain't no short leashes this year. If you can't get right, you can't do what you got to do. Uh, we're, 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 we're here to send a message at the end of the day. If you get passed up, you get passed up. There's guys, there's guys that ain't playing around. There's guys that are, that are in the weight room. They're early to practice. They're the last ones to leave. There's guys that are wanting to get on the field. And if you can't get right and you get passed up, that's it. Uh, it there ain't no short leashes this year. This is a different culture. We're trying to bring in guys that that really, really fall in love with what Coach Hugh Freeze and this staff is doing. You want guys 100% bought in. And if you keep having to give a guy chance after chance after chance, 
uh, eventually, you know, it's it's like the the saying of "Remember the Titans," where he said, "Hey, you got to cut a man loose sometimes. He might be a he might be a hell of a lineman, but he's here for the wrong reasons, and sometimes you got to cut a man loose." I don't care how close we are. I don't care how much we love each other and all that. If you ain't here for the right reasons, you got to go. And, you know, I I think he got passed up. I think, like I said, uh, other guys were in the building working. And other guys were getting better. And, obviously, we hate to see it. But it, it happens. And I wish him well wherever he lands. I hope he lands on his feet and he takes off running. Uh, if he if he does end up at an SEC school and and has to sit out a year or whatever, like I hope he he has a phenomenal career. Um, I, I I he's he's an Auburn man, right? So I'm not gonna sit here and bash him and say, oh well, JD could have did this, JD could have did that. I hope he gets it together, and I hope he figures it out, and he has one hell of a career because. Uh, you know, he did flash. He did flash on 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 this roster. He had his moments where we were like, "Hey, that's that guy. Like he's gonna be a dude," and it just didn't work out. And some sometimes that's how it goes, Dustin. Like it's uh, yeah, it's it's the harsh reality of it. So, uh, you know, I wish him well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's gonna be better for the team in the long run if, if those are the issues, right? We just yeah. can't have it, and we've all talked about what has to happen and. You know, it sucks, but like you said, I wish him the best, and there's a lot of potential there. So I'm hoping that he gets it together, finds himself, and put, you know becomes a good football player that he can be. Yep. Um, got a super chat here. We appreciate you. This is your buddy, right? Yeah, man. What's up, Chuck? Yeah, we appreciate you, buddy. And then he asked a question saying, fellas, have y'all heard the news about some big names maybe possibly entering the spring portal in college football? Do you think Auburn gets a good Q or gets a QB if the right one is there? Or will Hugh ride out with his guys? Um, we're going to kind of get into the quarterback discussion here in a second when we talk about updates from spring practice. But, yeah, I listened to Josh Pate's episode from, I believe it was Sunday, but his latest episode, and he said that he's hearing behind the scenes that this portal is about to be the wildest yet. And basically you have the yep. ruling, uh, the ruling, the court ruling with the NCAA in Tennessee where Tennessee won. And now people are saying – there's no rules anymore. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter who's there's no one. They don't have any power. Who is there to enforce the rules and what rules are there even to enforce? So yeah, it's really, you're starting to hear from these mods of different sites and these, these guys that really kind of know behind the scenes. I saw Kirby smart say last week, he said, I just want to know. He said, if I could just know February 2nd, what my roster was going to be for the year until the next February 2nd. He said, I could deal with NIL. I could deal with transfers. I could deal with anything else. Yep. But he said, I'm going up to August 1st, the opening day of fall camp, trying to go over what my roster is, how the hell, like the sport can't survive this way, man. So as far as Auburn names, um, I haven't really heard anything too much, but I would say that like, I'm, it's going to happen. Like nothing's off the table. Guys are going to get poached. Yeah, but and and guys are gonna realize that they're not gonna get the play in time that they thought they were, and then they're gonna hit that second portal window. But like Josh Pate's tweet though, when the Caden Proctor deal went down, he was like, "If y'all think this is something," he was like, right. "Just wait in a couple weeks when the second portal window opens, and then it's gonna get really interesting." But my thing with it is, Dustin, is you're just allowing kids to come and go as they please. All right. Mm-hmm. This whole transfer portal stuff, I'm a huge fan of the transfer portal. All right. Huge fan of it. I think I think if it is run the right way and we we put rules on the portal, it can be a very successful thing for kids who are looking for a second chance. All right. I don't think you should be able to transfer until you have completed two years at a school that you signed with out of high school. Or your coach has been fired. All right. I just, all this, you get to go here, you get to go there. All right. Well, now I'm here and I'm not really liking it. I didn't think this was going to happen. So I'm just going to go back to the old place where I come from. All right. But hey, you got to bring me the truck back first, homie. All right. 
that NIL deal that, that we made, you got to bring the truck back. Then you can go back to Alabama. So you got to stay two years at a school. You only get one free transfer. If you transfer, all right, you can't go to DJU, all right? You can't go the DJU route and be transferring three, four different times. I mean, you're on your, what, fifth school now or whatever, third school, and you're just traveling all around the country, dog. You've, you've got a little bit of the East Coast, all right, the, the Carolinas, because you spent some time in Clemson. Then you went out to the PNW, went up there to Oregon State, and now you're back in Florida, Sunnyside, Tallahassee. And, and it's, it's just like, what are, we, what are we allowing, man? This whole thing is a mess. And uh, I don't know. I, it, Josh Pate seemed to think there was a lot of people besides Bama that were going to get hit hard. So I guess we got to wait and find out. Yeah. I mean, there's not any other sport out there that has multiple free agency periods. So you just, the, the structure of the sport is goofy. And it's like, yeah. you know, obviously, when you look at this, it can't sustain this way. It, it, it's not going to work this way. So there's no rules. Yeah, I mean, there's no rules. Yeah. It's, you get to do what you want. It, it's like it, when we grew up, there were rules, dog. If you transferred, you had to sit out. Right. Like if you if you went if you were in high school and you transferred to a cross town rival or whatever, you had to sit out a year. Period. There wasn't no getting around it. Unless your parents moved into that district or whatever, and and majority of parents weren't doing that. But now, I mean, there's dudes down here in South Alabama in, in football transferring all from from Louisiana coming to this school to play, and this kid's coming from Birmingham down to Mobile to play, and other than that, I'm like, dude, like, what is going on, man? Like, you didn't hear this stuff, and it's like there's no rules. It's just, and it's it's in the college game, and and you get to come and go as you please. And I'm just not a fan of it, man. We got to get rules, and and it starts with nil and recruiting, dog. We got to completely get that out. Being able to walk into somebody's home and say, "Hey, I'll give you three million dollars to come play at my school." That's where it all went down the drain. Yeah, I see a lot of people in the comments. I pulled a couple of y'all's up saying that we need contracts. I think that's the way that it's eventually going to go. Contract. Yep. And then it's going to have to be based off of like, I would say like incentive based to make it fair. And then obviously, um, at least that's what I would do if I was a school. Like I'm not going to get, I wouldn't be giving all these freshmen just a whole bunch of money. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they put some kind of cap or some kind of limit, you know, but I definitely think that contracts is the way that's going to go eventually because and they, they're going to get it down to one portal window. Because like I said, there's no other sport that has multiple windows like that for basically what is free agency. And then like Blake says, all the, like the NFL has like such structured rules to its contracts, to its yeah. free agency. Like, and that's all for the benefit of the game, keeping the sport healthy and football is one sport. It's not even, it's not like basketball and continuity sure helps in basketball, but you can put together a couple ballers and go out and win some games, man. Like football you need a couple years to learn the system and develop. It's just, I think yep. it's bad for the players. Not all the time, right? Like there's plenty of guys that go and get in a better situation. But I just think that a lot of times the back and forth, you're in three programs in three years and you're looking back wondering why this four-star recruit never developed. And it's like, well, every spring camp, he's got a different helmet on. Like it, huh. It's the portal window for college basketball was open during the NCAA tournament. All right, it is literally open right, right, right. during the NCAA tournament. What in the world is going on, guys? We we can't have somebody coaching and preparing for an NCAA tournament game, <laughs> and then you're you're hey, this guy hit the portal, coach. We need to go recruiting. Well, hey, I'm, I'm trying to prepare for a Sweet 16 game. I don't have time. To, to dip into the portal. What are you talking about? That's why coaches are leaving, folks. They don't want to put up with it no more. They're tired of it. I honestly think that's why Dabo lost the love. 
I think that's why Dabo Swinney said, hey, I'm just, I'm not into it like I used to be. And that's that's enough about other teams. We, we, we'll we get back on Auburn. Sorry, I went off on my soapbox, Dustin. I just think there's got to be rules in, in college, man. And I, I think we're, we're heading down a, a dangerous road. And uh, it's it's got to it's got to come back, man. We got to bring it back. And if it takes Nick Saban to do it, then damn it, get him in there. Yeah, for sure. But like uh, like I said, Chuck, we'll definitely touch on the quarterback part of that here shortly. Um, real quick on the recruiting front, Blake got a, a couple predictions rolling in. I saw where Jeffrey Lee made a prediction for a big four star out of your neck of the woods there, Carday Smith. Um, mm-hmm. Right now, we're in a recruiting battle with him. It seems to be the Auburn, FSU, and Mississippi State battle. Um, no, no date yet. He hasn't set a date, but it sounds like the visit went so well that you know, obviously, some predictions are coming in. And then you have uh, Eric Winters, a linebacker out of Enterprise. It appears to be Auburn and Georgia battle. He wants to commit before spring practice, which is April twenty second for him. So, and seems like Auburn's in pretty good standing there. Big time player, super athletic. And then it seems like we've kind of narrowed in on a quarterback. Uh, Hughes and Long. Yeah, I think it's Hussein Longstreet. He's a four-star QB from California. I'm actually going to get in here for our members tomorrow and do a video on him. You need, uh, need to look up and learn a little bit more about him. But it's, it's uh, Auburn and Texas A&M battle here. And he just mm. had his first visit, had a lot of good things to say about his visit. So he was really kind of blown away by Auburn, the coaching staff, the family feel, and all that thing. So, And his decision date is April 14th. So mm. need to get that quarterback in this recruiting class. We kind of saw what Walker White did last year. But I would say that this month of March, Q was really kind of, even with the 26 kids, he really got a lot of momentum these last two weeks in the 26 class. But he was really gained a lot of momentum with a lot of big-time recruits. And I think you're going to start seeing these commitments over the summer kind of start pouring in. And I think that – I think you might see 8-day weekend, you might see a couple guys popping. There's a couple guys that we're, we're pretty close to, so just keep an eye on them. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about the way that things are going on recruiting for Had a little bit of a lull there, but – Hugh, man, just a master of getting the right guys on campus at the right time. They really do a good job when these guys are on campus. I don't know if y'all saw the videos. They had the ice cream chucks out there, DJs out there, you know, really just setting that atmosphere and kind of showing them what Auburn's all about. So I think that we're heading in the right direction, Blake, sitting there, you know, no matter where you look, sixth, seventh in the rankings, all things are good, man. You just got to keep stacking that talent. And why is this important, Blake? Because when you get five stars like Cam Coleman, Every single Tuesday night when we do updates, guess who caught a touchdown pass Saturday at the scrimmage, Blake? Mm, that man. I, I tell you what, he's going to be wearing number eight. He reminds me a whole hell of a lot of somebody else that used to wear number eight for that other team across the state. Mm. He looks like a game changer like that. That man's already put on – he's already put on muscle since he got to campus. He looks like a freak. That catch they posted today, that man's a true freshman. Playing the ball like that. (laughs) That's freaky. That kid's 18. Got some hands. Got some hands. Nasty. Nasty. Uh, He he just might go down as the greatest – the greatest wide receiver. I mean, I, I think it's he, he's destined to, right? Uh, I think he's got to. I think he's got to. And, you know, one thing that caught my eye, I was just glancing on social media. I think it was yesterday afternoon. And Alabama, or it might have been two days ago, Alabama picked up a, a commit. And they jumped up to, like, number six in the rankings or whatever. I can't remember what site. And they're on there, and they're like, oh, you know, there was all this talk about, uh, you know, Auburn was ahead of us. Where was Alabama? Uh, Husky Harson, and all of this. Look, folks, if you're in that top ten in recruiting, you're doing something right. If you're in the top eight, you're doing something right. So with them at six and us at seven, I ain't worried. I ain't trying to get on social media and talk trash to you about who's a, who's ahead of who. That's just telling me Hugh Freeze is bringing dogs into this program, and we're about to compete. It There ain't going to be no talent gap anymore. If my buddy is bringing in seven, you know, if we're seventh and they're sixth or they're eighth or whatever, 
that means it's about to be an even playing field. Right. And 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 I'm 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 straight with that. I'm cool. I, I that's that's what Hughes bringing in, and I can ride with that all day. Uh, you just look at the list of people that are coming to Auburn. You keep seeing the names flash. You look at the mods and and what they're saying about the kids who are coming into campus, and they're saying, "Hey, we love Auburn." A couple of weeks ago, we were just saying that Auburn was now a basketball school. And one thing I say to that, Dustin, is you know, yesterday I posted on Twitter about baseball and the attendance, right? And people started coming in from all these different places, and they were just like, "Ha, ah, that's laughable." You know, Arkansas fans, Mississippi State fans, and I was like, well, look, homie, here's how it goes. Auburn will always put football first in athletics until the day I die, you die, my children die. It'll always be Auburn football will be first on that campus. It'll never change. I don't care how bad, who wants it to. We we don't have the baseball facilities and everything like that because we're trying to catch up, dog, because we put everything into football. You, so you can laugh at us all you want to, but your football program is cheeks. You, you don't win ever at anything. So, yeah, you turn to the route of baseball, all right? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get our football program back on top and also have our baseball program and our basketball program Elite. All three be elite. Man, I hate to make the comparison, but right now, I, it's it's look at Alabama. They're in the playoffs. They go into the Sweet 16 again. And their baseball team went to a Super Regional last year, and they're pretty dang good again this year. So, that's what we're trying to get to. And Hughes busting his tail, man. Every time I look at one of these lists, you see Alvin Henderson. You see all these cats. Alvin Henderson is a must get, in my opinion. Dog. I think he's changing it, man. I think he's changing it. Now we just got to take it to the field. We got to take it to the field and we got to put it there because there can't be no losing to New Mexico State this year. Yeah, for sure. So Cam Coleman is the name that we're hearing consistently that he's pretty much out there with the ones. I'm hearing that it's Cam Brown and then. Um, Jay Fair, obviously, and then Robert Lewis, the transfer from Georgia State. You expect him to be, yep. you know, experienced guy. I'm expecting like a five, six hundred yard year from him. If we got that, four or five touchdowns from Lewis, five hundred yards, you know, anything over that, that would be uh, that'd be yep. fantastic. Um, sounds like the offensive line is really having a couple of good days. So the question is going to be there: is that the defensive line concerns that we have? Like, you know, are they legit, um, or do we just finally have a really good offensive line? Is it a mixture of both? Um, but it sounds like the offensive line is performing well, that at the scrimmage, Damari Austin had a couple of big runs and that he really was kind of the standout in the running back room. Um, now, you know, with J.D. being gone, it sounds like Tyler Scott has really stepped up and become that third corner that he mm-hmm. could uh, definitely work his way into the rotation. So big time for him. You continue to hear about Sylvester Smith, continue to hear good things about Caleb Wooden. Um, somebody sent me a clip. Uh, or somebody sent me a screenshot and they told me that it was Jason Caldwell at 24 seven that he had wrote that Robert Lewis was having a good camp. So that's according to Jason Caldwell at 24 seven that Robert Lewis is really showing out. Boy, that would be big time for us if he could come in and be a contributor, but they're saying, or at least Jason Caldwell saying that he made a big jump. Um, some night, some young names that I was told about continue to be Bryce Kane, Malik Blockton, and then Kinsley Faustin, who was a young DB out of South Florida, that he's uh, been making some big plays. So, yeah, Blake, again, like we talked about last week, Bryce Kane, Kinsley Faustin, Malik Blockton, Tyler Scott, Cam Coleman, like Sylvester Smith. Sounds the young, young cats, man. Yeah, it's the young guys. It's the young core. And then Mike G's been open and saying, hey, this – he call, what do you call it? And he called it – uh. In one of the mixed episodes, you called it the Auburn Illuminati, and talking about talking about the young the young core that's going out and and doing workouts by themselves and really putting in the work to try to be great. Like these guys are motivated, man, and it just it it gets me excited. I don't know what the win total is going to be this year, but 
man, I can deal with I can deal with some L's, Blake. If there's a lot of young cats out there, and yep. they're making plays and they're making some mistakes, and in big games we get beat by some experience, but it just seems yep. to be consistent to me. Now Cam Brown, you know, that continues. You know, apparently he had another good day, um, had a good weekend. So if he can, that's we've heard this before with Cam Brown and Camp, right? So, but can he put it together? If he can put it together and be a solid option on the outside, and now all of a sudden they have to guard him. Like if they, if if Camp Coleman is what we think Camp Coleman is going to be, then that opens up things for Jay Fair. If Robert Lewis can come in and be what he was at Georgia State, just be seventy five percent of that production wise, that opens up all kind of things. Bryce Kane can blow things over the top, and then if Cam Brown can be what we think he can be. At that other outside position, just make them respect him. Yep. Man, dude, it would really open things up for us, Blake. It sounds like a lot of youth, a lot of playmakers, and it sounds like two, two, 2025 could be special. Mm. Now, I know everybody wants to win in 2024. I get it. Uh, but like Dustin just said, there's going to be some L's next year. All right, they, they, like when we get into fall, we're going to run into a, a couple of losses. We got a tough schedule. That little stretch right there with Georgia and Mizzou and Kentucky and all that, that's brutal, man. That's brutal. Uh, so we're going to run into some L's. I forgot Oklahoma in there too. So uh, we're going to run into some – we're young. We're young. But that's what you want to see is when Hugh got here, he told us, hey, that's the that's really the plan is 2025. Let's don't let's don't get it twisted. I know we're hungry to win. I get on here all the time and talk about, man, I'm so hungry to win, Dustin. I just want to get back. I want football to get back. All right? I I'm one of those people that hey, Auburn basketball it eats at me when when we lose. All right? That Yale game, like I just told you, I I just now got over it where I'm, I'm I flushed it. And I'm like, all right, it happened. There ain't no taking it back. I think the one thing that got me the most about that, Dustin, is watching Alabama win and go to the Sweet Six. That's what gets me the most is because I th- I think Auburn should have been in the Sweet 16, uh, and we should have went toe-to-toe with UConn. But I'm one of those dudes, when I get on Auburn football, it's die hard. It, it, it's – like, it, it takes me a minute, all right? So, I'm hungry to win. And when I hear guys like Cam Coleman and Robert Lewis and Camden Brown, man, Camden Brown, that catch they posted on Auburn uh, football the other day, yeah. If I, I said, hey, I need this four. I need you. I got to see you. I can't see Maryland four. I can't. I got to see this four. This is it. This is your last chance at Auburn. It's do or die, baby. I got to see it. Robert Lewis coming over, man, had, what, 77 catches or whatever at, at Georgia State? Yeah. Now, he ain't going to have that here, but I need you to take the top off of defense for me. Man had a 97-yard touchdown reception last year. I need you to take it. I need you to take the top off. That's what me and Dustin have been on here preaching last year in the middle of the season. We're like, Dustin, bro, we ain't got nobody to take the top off. Nobody. We can't ain't got nobody to stretch the defense. Man, when you're having to throw to VAR, your best receiver, VAR, down the field, like, I'm sorry. It's just, it seems like, yeah, we're young, but we got talent now, Dustin. We got some dudes. Could it make things easier for Peyton Thorne? Could it make things easier for whoever's at that quarterback spot? Because apparently we're hearing mixed reviews. I, I don't I don't know. Maybe it's not set in stone yet. But could it make life easier? We know what we got on the offensive line. I I think Percy Lewis w- was one of the bigger pickups in the whole conference. Yeah, it was big time. I think that's one of the biggest pickups in the whole conference. I think it helps Dylan Wade. I, I, I think it helps the entire Auburn line. Auburn's coming with the defense, Dustin. We're coming with the defense. We That's one thing. Auburn, we're going to have a defense show up. 
We might not have the offensive side down, and we might not score a whole lot of points, but damn it, our defense is going to keep us in a ball game. It's the Auburn way. I think that's what Auburn prides themselves on. And having guys like Eugene Asante, Austin Keys coming back, uh, Kay and Lee, we can go on and on down the list. Auburn's coming with a defense. We just got to have these guys on this offense step up. And, yeah, there's a lot of youth, but we went and watched a couple of them play this year in high school. One of them ain't even on campus yet. Two of them ain't even on campus yet. Filthy. Perry Thompson's going to play. He's going to play. I think he's going to do great things early at Auburn. I think that, I think there's a recipe for, for Auburn to put up points this year. It all comes down to one thing, man. It all comes down to who's slinging that pill back there. Because we're going to have that. I don't want to hear none of this. I don't want to hear none of this in the middle of the season, Dustin, about uh, well, we, we, we threw the back shoulder and we just, did, we just didn't come up with it. All right? I don't want to hear none of that. We got dudes now. So... It's on them. We got to step up and make plays. Yeah. Well, Arvin Vaughn's excited, and you should be. The kid is a baller. And like you said, he's not even here yet, but he's definitely working hard this summer, and he's going to be ready to go. It's really it's just about learning the playbook, getting familiar with the system. I think it'll take a couple games for Perry, but I bet by about halfway through the season, you're consistently seeing him in the rotation and contributing. Yep. It's just a, a freak athlete that – Auburn hasn't had a whole lot of out there on the outside. so And I think that that sophomore year will really be when Perry's like ready to take that jump and, and show you what he's really all about. Yep. And But like you said, you got to get the ball to him. And it sounds like, Blake, that uh, Peyton Thorne just kind of continues to have the best practices, you know, and be the best in the room. Uh, the, the movement that does seem to have been made is it seems like Hank Brown has jumped into QB2. And so now to your point earlier, Chuck, you were asking about transfers. It looks like Holden, if I had to, was a betting man, if he comes out of this deal third, if post A day, he's third on the depth chart, yeah. I don't see a world where he stays here. And I would encourage Holden that these are the kind of situations why I think the portal is a good thing. And I would encourage him to go somewhere like TJ Finley did last year. And I'm not knocking him saying he can't play at other elite, you know, places. But those, if he goes somewhere else, P5, they're already going to have other dudes battling for that position. You know, could already be a guy that's established or whatever. You got to go somewhere, in my opinion, if you're holding, go somewhere like TJ Finley did, Texas State, get in there. South Alabama. Yeah, get your reps in, bro. Get your reps in. Sling that pigskin, dude. Get some tape out there. Don't go somewhere trying to win the big job and all that because, you know, I'm trying to be nice here, but at some point if he was that guy, he wouldn't be getting passed up on the depth chart by Hank Brown. At some point, if you were that dude, you would be the one passing people. And it's, it's, it seems to be the same thing with Holden, is that you hear that he had three or four good days and then he has three or four bad days. Remember last year? Apparently, he had a really rough start to camp. It was just really rough. And mm. then pro day, he comes out there and looks better than Cam Newton and then finishes camp super strong, and everyone's going, oh, Holden's that guy. And then we come out here again, and he gets his opportunity in the ball game. doesn't look good. They give it to the guy behind him. He looks good. And now we start the next camp, and he's not really taking, he's not really taking the reins, man. He's not it, – it's – if you were holding, this was your opportunity. Get in there, ball out, make Q and them notice. And it just seems like he hasn't done has, hasn't done that. So I don't think Holden will be here after spring Blake. And you've you've held that belief for a year or two. Yeah. Um look, I I ain't I always say this. I I ain't trying to down a down a an Auburn player or a kid or whatever. It just didn't – It it. let me say it. I don't want to say it didn't work out. It just hasn't worked out. All right. It, it's just – when they put it – when they put Holden in oh, – I, I said it this morning in the group chat. He, he, he looks – he looks as lost as Patrick Swayze did when he first become a ghost and seen Demi. All right. 
if anybody knows the movie Ghost, all right? They, he does. He looks lost. And I don't know if it's when they put him in terrible situations. I know the Mizzou game at home in Harson. I mean, our offensive line was just absolutely terrible. Uh, but even last year, man, when he got on the field, it just it just doesn't look like it's there. In the bowl game, it just didn't look like it was there. And that's why I always stayed on it is is I just always felt like holding um like I said, South Alabama. South Alabama. But good things happen when, when you take a step down, all right? There's nothing wrong with that. Look, South Alabama just hired Major Applewhite. They're gonna throw it all around the yard. Yeah, get your reps, man. Go go spin that thing. All right? Like we would love to have you down here in Mobile. I think it would be huge for for South Alabama if if Holden was to transfer down if he does enter the portal, you know. But but it just doesn't sound like if he's getting passed up by Hank. And you saw it. You saw it in the bowl game. You're like, hey man, it's it's clear as day. All right, both guys are getting time. They're getting reps. Hank ma- making the offense flow. Holden, it's just take a step forward, take two steps back, and. uh it's uh, you know, it might be time to hit the portal when it opens up, and I'm not backing off of that. Um, I just yeah. think, I just think there's there's other routes, other ways to go, man. Yeah. So then, if that happens, I do think that Auburn would look to bring in a portal QB. But like we've said a hundred times, what what are the options really going to be that are out there? I don't think there's going to be a guy that is just a clear above Peyton Thorne would beat everybody in the room. So I think you would go get a guy, but you would at most you would be getting a guy that was on PT's level that could compete with him. Um, but then you might you might yeah I know that'll definitely happen. (laughs) Um, but you might, it might just, it might just be an arm, bro. They might just go get a guy that's played some football the way Bama did the kid from Notre Dame last year. Um, just get a guy in the room that you're not even expecting to be QB two, maybe not even QB three, but you just need more than three quarterbacks. So that, that might be the route as well. We'll see how it goes, but you know, all the same, it sounds like Peyton Thorne is kind of steadily pulling away and Hank Brown's kind of putting his foot down as QB two and that Walker White showing flashes, but mm. obviously a whole lot of learning there to go. Dustin, you know what's going to happen when oh, that I'm second really. portal went. I already hey, know. That's the guy. That's QB1. All right, Every quarterback that hits the portal, Auburn Twitter, is it, that's the guy. That's him. He's him. He's him at the – all right, come on. That just means they lost their job, dog. All right. If they hit the portal in the second window, they lost their job. So, Un- unless to what Josh Pate was saying, Auburn had a trick up their sleeve, and we're about to just go pull somebody from somebody. I don't see it happening, but you know, that would yeah. be boy. That would that would blow the lid off of it for sure. Cam Ward's coming to Auburn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't get me started. Yeah, that whole yeah. thing was a mess, bro. <laughs> that was a mess. Our guy Michael says the wide receiver class in this 2025 class could be great with the six they got targeted. And then Michael names them out. He says Derek Smith, Caleb Cunningham, Travis Smith, Wiley, Dylan Upshaw, and TK. Look, uh, Michael, I've seen Dylan Upshaw play a couple times. Absolute dog, especially with the football in his hand. He turns into a running back. Um, and then Caleb Cunningham. Like that kid, yeah. That kid is just different, bro. That yeah. that's that's different. When you watch that, you're like, whoa, this this pops. Um, and then Derek Smith, obviously a huge target for Auburn. We thought we were kind of trending in the right direction, and then he commits to Bama. But them Sarah Land guys over there, Blake, you need to go talk to him. But uh, I think that that one ain't over. That one's not over. And y'all know that when Cam Coleman committed to Texas A and M, I I said we'll see. I, I I call cap a little bit. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Hugh didn't Hugh didn't bat an eye when that happened. Hugh's not going to bat an eye in Derek Smith recruitment. I do agree with you, Michael. They got some solid solid names on the board, and I think that as long as Hugh Freeze is Auburn's head coach, Auburn's going to bring in one of the best wide receiver classes in the country every single year. He yep. was able to get these guys <clears throat> the best receiver receiving class Auburn's ever had with putting together an anemic passing season 
<laughs> okay, Camp Coleman saw the New Mexico State game and it still came to Auburn. So it just kind of tells you, like, they believe in what Hugh Freeze can do with the wide receiver position. They believe in where it's going to go. So, Michael, I'm expecting us to land a lot of those kids. And um, I know Dylan Upshaw was in Alabama today. It just kind of made me made me cringe just seeing him post the pictures. But you got to, you know, go do it, go enjoy it and all that. And uh, But I think that that would be big for us. I'm hoping that Cam Coleman kind of plays a part in that one. I don't – don't want it to just be one every now and then from Phoenix City. Bring them Phoenix City kids in every single year. So Upshaw is one of the kids that I've had identified for a couple of years now. It was a big, a big one in this class. And then after watching Caleb Cunningham tape, I just said, "Oh my God!" Like yeah. you, you got to go get that guy. Uh, <laughs> Kyle says we got some awesome young talent on the D line, but we need at least two transfers coming in this summer to stack the depth. Same for DB. Yeah, I saw uh, some people were sending to us in the group chat about the guy trending uh, from Indiana, and um, so I don't know much about that one. Like honestly, we've been we've been launching the gaming channel this week, so we have just been spending hours trying to figure out technology. <laughs> at least it, it, it has been it has been quite the adventure behind the scenes here. Um, it's rough. So, it, it has definitely been something. So, uh, but yeah, we'll definitely definitely keep an eye on that. And Kyle, I agree with you. We need a couple of interior defensive linemen to really kind of beef up that depth. You know, it can Jason Jones take that next step? Maybe, but I say you go get two or three guys that have played a significant amount of ball, so you're not taking any chances there. And then even if he does step up, and all it takes is one roll of the ankle, and your whole season looks different. Blake got the baseball game on. Stanfield, baby. Bomb. Down 3-2. Okay. We're down 3-2? to two? They got Down 3-2. Oh, yeah. Boys. Uh, Brett says, I saw where Champ Anthony has put on 20 pounds and is playing nickel slash safety. Been more vocal since bowl practice. Look, I mean, Champ was here for like two or three weeks and players started talking. Like, this kid can ball. And, you know, I think it was Keontae, right? It was Keontae. That's the reason that Champ is even here. He said, I know this guy from JUCO. I'm telling you all this is a player. He only had four or five games of JUCO tape. We kind of took a flyer on him. It looks like it's working out. You got to trust Crime Dog sometimes. And then, uh, you know, I just think that a lot of these guys, Brett, getting them in there with Crime Dog, some guys that were in Coach McGriff's way are now out of his way. He can coach the way that he wants to coach. And him and Charles Kelly kind of working together on the recruiting trail, but on that practice field, look, you, when you hear, when you hear that Tyler Scott has worked his way up into the third corner spot, it's a red shirt freshman that, that excites the hell out of me. It excites the hell out of me. Um, and you know that Kay and Lee's going to go over there and hold it down. You know that Keontae has got it. So I'm just really excited about the way that that whole defensive backfield is moving. And I hate that JD is off the team. I really, really do. But, you just got so many guys back there. We got and, dudes. And then they hear that Kinsley Faustin. And look, Kins, Kinsley went under the radar because you get guys like Caleb Harris from 7A Powers in Alabama that everybody knows about. And Kinsley's down here in, in South Florida where, you know, it, it's hard. It was hard. Like, when I was doing our member pods all year, it was hard to get Kinsley stats because he's at he's, – you know, he's out there in the Everglades, bro. He's out there. <laughs> you know you know what I mean? Yeah. And they got ball players down there. But if, if you've never been to a South Florida uh, high school game down there, there's not a lot of people at the games. And you can you can watch those games. Unless it's like the big schools, obviously, you know, but um, the big Miami schools and everything. But a lot of those games out there, man, like he comes from Naples. It's just not a lot, you know, not a lot of coverage of it. It was hard yeah. to get his tape. It was hard to get his stats. But – Boy, it popped. His his tape popped. Super athletic. So really, really fired up to, to hear that Kinsley Faustin is is making an impact early. And it's just going to be a lot of young guys, you know. So Vester Smith, Terrence Love back there at that safety spot. Um, you're not really hearing much about Robinson, the JUCO transfer in. And I kind of I'm not saying that he's not going to be, you know, a guy. But I'm just there's so many blue chip studs in that defensive backfield, and this is why you recruit that way. If we can recruit every position group the way that we've recruited the defensive back and get to this position, mm. then the the cream rise to the top, bro. 
then you then you find out who the dogs are. You're not mm. counting on one or two three star or one or two four stars, excuse me, that have to hit. That's what Auburn's yeah. been doing at receiver for so long. Okay, Kyle Davis has to hit. Nate Craig Myers has to hit. And then they don't. Okay. Well, let's say let's let he will, but let's say Perry Thompson doesn't hit. Well, Cam Coleman is hitting. So you got one. Let's let's say two of the four don't hit. Okay. Well, you still got two receivers that were super productive, right? That's why you recruit that way. Not all these young studs at DB. Some of them might hit the portal come this next cycle. Yep. You know, some of these guys that were, that were maybe that we've even brought up and mentioned, they might say, I got to go elsewhere to get my reps because it's just packed in here. But when you recruit at the level that we have, because this has been the only spot where that we've recruited at an elite level through all of our bullshit of recruiting the last five years. This is the only one that's been consistent. And shout out to our guy, Zach Gethers, because it's on him. And we love you, man, and we appreciate it. And but yep. he held it, he held it down. And that's and then running back's the second best looking position, right? Because Cadillac held it down. Continuity, but that's a discussion for another day. But if you can get to the point to where you're doing that in every position group, man, where it's nothing but blue chips competing with blue chips, boy, you're on to something. And it goes mm. to your point earlier about 2025. Could that be the year that Auburn kind of starts to take that? Starts to take that step. If this year could be that, man, if this year could be that eight and five year where you look back and say, okay, we looked competent. There was a yep. game plan. We lost some games that we could have won because that's just the way it goes. We were young. We weren't ready. We made some mistakes, but we had a game plan and we were going in a certain direction. Yep. Then you come into 2025 feeling really, really good. And, and if you get into situations – beat up on the schools you're supposed to beat up on so Hank Brown can get his reps or Walker White, whatever whatever the QB plan for 25 is. But you got to take advantage of the New Mexico States. Those got to be the games where 70, 80 people play. Mm -hmm. And you get in two, three quarterbacks and you find out what some other guys get and they get some game time. But Hank Brown didn't get that opportunity last year until a blowout on the wrong side. Until we just said, yeah, the hell with it. We got nothing to lose at this point. And that's not where you want to be, obviously. So, you know, I just, just again, man, I mean, we, we keep talking about it because it's the narrative that keeps coming out of spring camp. And I think we should be excited for it. Young guys that want to be at Auburn, that want to win at Auburn, that are working hard, that aren't just coming to practice and working hard and then going and being superstars. No, I'm done practicing. And now let's go meet up somewhere else and let's get in another hour of running these routes. Hmm. Man, when you got Cam, when you got Cam Coleman's and they're motivated, these guys want they they want to flip the script. They bought into it. As bad as all of us want to win, you finally got a group of players coming in that want to win that way. Mm. And not and not and I would say that you know, for you know SEC caliber athletes that come in there competitive, they always want to win that kind of thing. But I'm talking about guys that want to win for Auburn, Blake. Guys that that want to win big games, specifically in Jordan Hare Stadium. And that it that's powerful. Yep. That's powerful. If you can buy into the message, if you can buy into the logo, if you can buy into Auburn, when Auburn has buy in from everybody. It's hard for us to achieve, but when we actually pull it off, you can go, man. You can go. You got Camp Coleman and Perry Thompson over here, and they're bought in. <laughs> Walker White's already right, right. I mean, they're all, you know, you hear about all the QBs working hard, but you hear, hey, man, Walker White, like, he don't have to be taught nothing as far as habits. He's got to learn the game. But he ain't got to be taught anything as far as habits and doing the right thing. I'm getting fired up just talking about it, dude. I'll tell you one thing I liked about Walker. And this is off the field. Walker had a decision to make. Walker said as soon as he stepped out in Jordan Hare, looked up at the 
at the Jumbotron. And he said, decision made. That's it. He immediately shut it all down. All right. There wasn't no Clemson stuff at signing day. There wasn't no Arkansas stuff or anything like that. Any other team. It was it was Auburn. Auburn polo. Auburn hat. Auburn backdrop. Everything Auburn. Auburn tablecloth. Everything Auburn. Twitter constantly recruiting kids. He was recruiting kids that he didn't even know was he hey, they ain't even coming to Auburn. I'm gonna still try to recruit them. I'm gonna see what they got. It never wavered. It, it, it look, we see kids right now. Antonio Coleman. Oh, I, I'm a thousand, a thousand percent committed here. Well, I'm flipping my commitment to Auburn, and I'm a thousand percent committed here. And then a month later, it's well, I'm flipping my commitment back to Alabama, and I'm a thousand percent committed here. What does a thousand percent committed mean? Like, does it take two thousand percent to get you to sign, or does it take three, four, five thousand percent? Like, I, I don't know. How many times are we gonna keep going back and forth? Like, I, I don't know. You know, and and that was my thing with Walker White, man. There was no uh, gimmicky stuff. It was straight. Hey, I love Auburn. Out the gate, I love Auburn. I'm coming to Auburn, and that's it. It's over. What none of that other stuff. All right. That to me uh, speaks volumes. I think he gets it. I think he understands it. We talk all the time. These young cats, they don't remember Auburn like we do because we've sucked. All right. Let, let's let's just call it a spade a spade. We sucked, but we remember the good times. We remember when we used to win 10 games a year. And, you know, I, I'm not asking us to come out and win a national championship every year. Right. But I'm asking us to be, uh, give me LSU. Give me LSU. Let me win one, you know, every every six, seven, ten years, you know. But during those ten years, I want us to be 9-3, and 10-2, and two, playing in big-time bowl games. All right? Well, now that the playoff has went from – 12 to 14 it'll be at 68 before we know it uh yeah man just just get me in the ballpark all right hey before long auburn can win seven games and they're gonna get the chance to play in the college football playoff we're gonna go seven and five we're gonna have a chance to play in the college football playoff all right we're gonna have a first four in game uh because there's gonna be 68 teams in and it's gonna be magical all right um but no, I, th- I think that's what's impressive to me with Walker is he never wavered, and uh, you see the confidence at some of the clips that they post from from spring ball. Is he's energetic? He's having fun. He looks like a great teammate. He's wanting to learn. He's constantly you see him front of the line and things. Uh, he's wanting to take in every piece of information he can possibly get. That's a guy. That's a guy. That's what I kind of always said about Peyton is like when we see things, Auburn is tied the baseball game. When we see things, it's like I, I'm just kind of looking. I'm like, Where, where's Peyton at? Where's Peyton at? I want to see. I want to see a guy step up and emerge. And uh, like I said, I, I think Walker. I think he's an exceptional quarterback. I think he showed out in that All American game, and uh, I think he's going to do special things at Auburn, Dustin. Yeah, I'm with you. Hey, good stuff tonight. Good crowd tonight. We appreciate all you guys for being in here and rocking with us, man. Y'all are the best. On your way out, please hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. You know, we have basketball, football, baseball. We've been covering all these last couple weeks. Video games. We're staying busy, man. We're staying busy. Like I said, for our members, the member pod, um, we'll be dropping here for you guys in a little bit. Looking at the newest yep. commitment there, Ty Buster on the offensive line. Also working on one for Long Street because, like I said, I do believe that that is kind of the guy that Auburn has decided, okay, this is who we want to be our quarterback for the class. Auburn and Texas A&M battle. Interesting. Four-star quarterback out of California. I can't remember the last time, if ever, Auburn was, you know, had a quarterback from California on the roster, at least out of high school. So um, really excited to kind of get in there and look at this tape tomorrow and figure out what we got going on there. So um, and get over there to the Warport Gaming Channel. Like I said, I mean, we're, we're – 
really, really been grinding, trying to get that thing fired up. So if you're a sports gamer, get over there. A lot of MLB The Show content coming out soon. And then once they drop that NCAA, oh, my goodness, online dynasties, tournaments, I'm telling you all, man, it's going to be popping, and we look forward to that. Also, Blake, I almost forgot, brother, but the Barner Supply dropping these <laughs> new hats. Man, look at that hat on the right. I'm telling you, dude, it's fresh. That's fire. Yeah, it really is. And uh, the barn, the barn hards on the left as well. You're not going to find it anywhere else. The link is in the description, so go down there, click on that link, man. It would help us out. It lets them know that you know you that you heard from uh, heard about them from us. So please do that. And Blake, I think that's all I've got, brother. You got anything else before we get um, out of here? Yeah, I just oh, wanted to say I just wasn't touch on softball. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll go a different direction because I'm, I'm gonna let you get in on your Mickey Dean and Mickey Klein. Uh, is like I, I call him. Uh, I think that move should have happened a year ago. Um, I, I'm I'm not a not a Mickey Dean supporter. But one thing I want to say tonight before we get out of here, <clears throat> stay with me. Our guy Jake Crane made some comments. He made a video that he posted on Twitter the other day. Uh, we lost to Yale in the round of 64 in basketball, and. Uh, my guy Jake, you know, he 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 said some things, and uh, I couldn't agree more. I, I I think he hit the nail on the head, Dustin, and I wanted to bring it to everybody uh, that I think Auburn fans have to get away from uh, the participation trophy side of things. All right, that's what it is, dog. It's a participation trophy. I saw a lot of weak, weak replies to my tweet the other day. Well, at least we hung a banner. What? What are you talking about? At least we hung a banner, dog. We're out of the one. We're out of the one tournament that matters. We're out. We failed. We lost. We lost to an Ivy League school. We lost. And and you're sitting here telling me, well, at least we hung a banner. We won a ring. We won a ring. Oh, look at my ring. All right. Dog, don't, don't nobody give a piss about that ring. You think, the, look, those players, hey, yeah, SEC champ, that's cool. Oh, would you rather be an SEC champ or would you rather be a national champ? You think UConn gives a piss about a Big East tournament championship? Do you think Duke or UNC give a piss about an ACC championship? My biggest thing is, do you think the University of Alabama and that football program, when they beat Georgia and Atlanta and won the SEC championship, and they went out to California in the granddaddy of them all, and they got stuffed on the two-yard line, and they lost to Michigan. Do you think they got back to Tuscaloosa and was saying, oh, well, at least we won the SEC championship. Hang the banner, baby. No, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't get on Twitter and say, oh, well, at least I'm an SEC champion. Nah, dog. Sorry. Sorry. You know what Jalen Milrow said? I am sorry. I apologize. I failed you. Because that's the standard, dog. It's the standard. It's you win when it matters. And that's what Jake was saying. He wasn't down in coaches and, and wanting people fired and players to transfer. No, he was saying make it the standard to win when it matters. Quit choking on the big stage. Because that's what you're freaking doing right now. Is every time the moment gets tight, you gag. I watched a bunch of dudes who were in law school step up to the free throw line. And knock them down. Nothing but nylon. And I watch you step up there. And you can't even come close, dog. When you're sitting there, it you I could tell. I could look at some of those cats on Auburn's team and say, hey. He's missing. You tweeted it, Dustin. You said if it comes down, if it comes down to a free throw game, we will lose. 
And what happened? We had a dude who shoots 90%. Step up and miss a one and one. 90% on the year, dog, and you miss. And then I get a I get a response on Twitter that, oh well, free throws are hard. You don't know, you don't know how it feels in that moment, that pressure situation. Dog, you want to be in the pressure situation. Go back and watch the clip of Kyle Guy in the Final Four. Stepped up, dog, didn't look at anybody, said, give me the rock. Let me knock all three of these down real quick. Bang, we're going to the natty. Pressure. You want to talk about pressure. Man, some of y'all, we got to get over it. 2013, you're a minute away and you can't make a tackle in the open field. It you gag. You gag. Fourth and fourth and goal from the 31. Gag. That's what it is. But all I hear is, well, at least we won a championship. You know, Alabama didn't. Let me call Brandon Miller real quick, dog. Let me call Brandon Miller and say, hey, Brandon, what did you think about your season last year? At Alabama. Was it a success? I can guarantee you right now, Brandon Miller would answer and say, no, it was an absolute failure. You want to know why? Because I had the worst performance ever in the NCAA tournament that I could possibly have, and I failed my team. Because that's the standard. That's why we get made fun of, all right? When you constantly get on social media, Alabama fans say, well, that's all they care about over at Auburn is just beating Alabama. And all Alabama cares about is winning natties. Change the standard, folks. Stop caring about a banner that we're going to raise up in Neville Arena. And when you walk in, you're going to look at it and say, we lost to Yale in the round of 64. That's it, man. It's simple and plain. Want to be a winner, dog. I'm out, Dustin. Appreciate yeah. you, brother. Yeah, no, I mean, I thought that uh, it was. I knew when Jake posted it. Um, <laughs> I was like, "Boy, you you started the hornet nest here, boy." This is this is a conversation that uh, it's very interesting how much our fan base has this conversation. Um, but I'm with you, and I'm with Jake, and you know, I've been saying for a long time. It's just I hate I hate nothing more than in that moment feeling like we're gonna we're gonna make the mistakes. I hate that I was able to tweet that out with 10 minutes to go in the game and be right. I would have loved for that to look stupid and people coming back and been like, ha, 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 Auburn made them. I would have yep. loved for that to be like, I would have liked that to be the case. But but you knew what was going to happen. But, yeah, I mean, until, until I see otherwise, what am I supposed to think? And that sucks. Uh, so, yeah, so at the beginning of the show, some of y'all were asking our thoughts on softball. Man, listen, like Blake said, too late. I don't know why this decision – wasn't made beforehand, yeah. but, you know, it is what it is, and I guess he's going to ride out the season. So I would just say that if you're if you're in Auburn and you're around the area and you live close, get out there as much as you can to support the softball players, support the athletes, because it's a tough way to go. Like, if you're a senior and this is your last year playing softball for Auburn, that sucks. So get out there in the big games, the Alabama. I don't know if we even have Alabama at home this year or not, but get out there as much as you can. Support those girls, man. They're definitely going to need it. And then – John Cohen, Auburn should be competitive every year in softball. I know the SEC is a beast, Facts. but Auburn should be competitive. I'm not asking, you know, we ain't got to be out there winning natties all the time and all that, but I've seen Auburn be a force in this conference in softball, and I think that uh, there's no reason why it shouldn't be. So, John Cohen gets this one right, right, you know, having a reason to think that he won as of now. So, we'll be watching that one for sure. Like I said, for the members, be on the lookout for those pods. That will be uh, the ones already done. I'll be dropping for you guys here in a little bit. And then we're going to work on the Long Street one as well tomorrow. And uh, that's all I got, man. So really, really good crowd tonight. Love all y'all. Can I can I say one thing real quick? Yeah. And then I'll let all y'all go. I appreciate it. I'm, I know we're running late, but I got one thing to say. Dog, what is up with supporting people who transfer out, and when they transfer out, they talk shit about Auburn? Oh, where's Tanner at? We need Tanner. <laughs> and I excuse me for my language, but ain't no way I'm about to support somebody that wants to rag on Auburn openly on social media. And then I get on here and, and I'm slinging tweets out and, and, oh, I miss you. I miss you. Please come back. <laughs> Dog, what are we doing? I don't 
Strange times, but it's it's wild. When you, Look, when you when you pass out when you pass out trophies to kids for ninth place for 10 15 years they grow up hey They're look growing up now now that it's yeah it is it's, it's my thing look she come she left auburn all right she come back she spanked us it ain't about her it's about our fans our fans like she just whooped you dog <laughs> she just whooped you and you gonna get on here and just say, "I miss you. I want you to come back." I've never in my life. I don't. I don't get it. I don't. I, I just. I don't get it. It's not. It's not me talking trash about her. Right. It, it's me saying, "What are we doing as a fan base?" She, she dog. She's not laughing with you. She's laughing at you. Okay. The whole time behind her her cell phone screen, she's sitting there going, <laughs> "Look at these clowns! Like I'm playing them. I'm literally playing them." That's it, man. I'm out, Dustin. Uh, yeah. End it, brother. Yes, sir. Good stuff, y'all. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you have not. We will see you guys at the end of the week, man. Until next time, we're out of here. War damn eagle, baby. War damn.